Firstly, listen, British, European, WBO, World Cruiserweight Champion, Commonwealth Light Heavyweight Champion, amongst other things, Enzo Macronelli. Welcome to, uh, to Slothbox. Thanks for coming on. I, uh, yeah, good. Thanks for having me, Paul. Uh, I, I, we, we could have thrown a bit of a curveball there, Enzo. We could have started uh, talking in Italian and benvenuti tutti and everything else, but, uh, yeah. but I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just keep it English for the moment. Whilst on the no Italian um, theme, though, I, uh, I was chatting with uh, Richard Maynard yesterday, and he said to mention this little story just to, to wind you up a bit. So it was to do with soaking your hands in olive oil. Tell me about that. He, he's just a prick. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, put, he put out, um, he put out the, a press release once that I punched so hard because I soaked my hands in uh, imported olive oil from Brescia. Uh, for an hour a day, he's a div. <laughs> uh, well, listen, that's a good way to get everyone's uh, sense of humor flowing, you know. Now, listen, you um, you, you started boxing properly at the age of eight, at, excuse my pronunciation here, at uh, Bonnie Mean uh, Boxing Club, is that correct? Yeah, Bonnie Mine. Yeah, Bonnie Mine, there we go. So, it's owned and run by your dad, Mario. Now, before we talk about you, I just want to have a, a couple of little stories about your dad here. Now, two little stories I want you to expand on. One, involving a priest when your dad was about 14 and then the other one later on when he was in the army. What happened? Uh, the, the priest I don't really know too much about. I know I know it was a bit of an argument and he gave him a, a little clip. I, I don't know why. Uh, but the, arg- and the sergeant in the army, uh, he, my dad said he was a bit of a bully. He was, uh, he, he didn't take orders well. My dad, he didn't, um, he wouldn't bow down to people's demands and stuff like that. So, uh, he, he, the sergeant had to go at him on the numerous numerous occasions, and he finally snapped and, and he knocked the sergeant out. And uh, rather than put, putting him in solitary or whatever, they just kicked him straight out like they couldn't cope with him. Well, there we go, everyone. We have it officially. Uh, if Richard is listening to this, Richard Maynard, it wasn't a do with uh, supposedly soaking his hands in olive oil, it was in the bloodline. There we go now. The title that, you know, you often sort of uh, just refer to sort of half-jokingly, but at the time, you know, certainly the original version of the title was uh, um, had its validity. And in today's current day and age, it would have certainly had more validity than a lot of the WBA straps. It was the original WBU strap. And um, you beat Bruce Scott, very sturdy fighter, to win that title. What are your memories of that fight? Um, to be honest, my, my biggest memory is that I was actually gutted it was for the WBU. Uh, you know, it, it was never, it was never a world title belt. It was just a stepping stone belt, and you know, I never thought of any, anything other. But at the time, Bruce Scott was the British and Commonwealth champion. Uh, so, I th- if I had fought for the British and Commonwealth champion, I think I'd have been one of the youngest of twenty-one to win it as a cruiserweight. Or also, I think I think it was my fourteenth fight, so it'd been like a, a quick time to win it. So, but it was it was a good fight. I remember. I remember putting the, the raised gloves on for the first time. I remember tapping myself in the chin and thinking, oh, fuck, I can't wait to smash him with this. And my brother politely reminded me that he's got them on as well. And I, I sort of, <laughs> sort of, the smile turned to a frown. Um, you know, he caught me in the first round, caught me around the back of the year, lost my balance, uh, got up, uh, just got myself back into the fight. I started hurting him with a jab. I started hurting him with the right hand. Uh, and then, like my dad always told me, follow the right down the left up. And I caught him in the fourth round. And, you know, I sort of burst onto the scene. I had knockout of the year. I won uh, the sports writer's best young fighter of the year award. Um, so it, it, was, it was sort of something that kick-started me. What a lot of people don't realise about Enzo Macronelli is that that power, again, it definitely wasn't through the olive oil. It was, it was there from a much younger age. Um, at the age of 10, you won your first Welsh title. Then you went on to win another eight. Then you went on to win nine of the 12 senior contests by knockout. However, um, eight, 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 eight senior fights, eight wins, eight knockouts. But there we go. Yeah, not, not bad. Not bad. You couldn't have improved on that, you know. So, so yeah, the, the power has always been there. The power's always been there. But in the younger days, um, I remember you telling me a while back, the discipline wasn't always there. Tell me about the time you went on the, on, on the piss the night before a fight. Um. It was it was my first loss, um, Swaby, and uh, uh, you know I'd, I'd been knocking everyone out. I'd been I'd been smashing people up in sparring, and I just, I just lived the life. And you know I lived the life. I was young. I was 18, 18, 19, 
uh, going out, people people are loving me. You know, I've always, always been well respected anyway, from a young age. Um, and, you know, it, it fought with me out, out in town a night, a night before a fight. And, you know, looking back, I, I got what I deserved. Yeah, well, you, you certainly managed to, uh, to, to reel in the discipline. And um, one person I know who was a bit of a taskmaster was uh, Enzo Calzaghi. Talk about the, uh, the late great Enzo. What, what was it like training with him? It, it was mad, mate. It was, it was really mad. Obviously, you knew my dad. I obviously knew Joe, Gavin Reese. I boxed with Gavin, Brad, Lee Delroy, Byron, some of the fighters he had, uh, all from the Amsterdam days from the age of 10. So it was nice to be part of the group. Uh, and I remember the first day I trained, um, I was driving home in the car. My brother phoned me and he said, uh, I was training. And I said, yeah, pretty easy. I, I said, I don't know what, what I was moaning about. I said, it was all right. No problem at all. So the second day, I was coming home in a car. He, he wrecked me so bad. I had to pull over in the hard shoulder to take a rest. My arms couldn't turn the wheel properly. He absolutely wrecked me. But he, he, was, he was a mad individual. Uh, totally went against the grain of what sports science is now in boxing. It was none, none of this eating at certain times, training at certain times. Some days we'd go in the gym and we'd do like a, a three, four hour session. You know, me and Joe, Regularly done six mile hill run, straight back to twelve rounds sparring, uh, straight to six rounds on the pads. I do bags or vice versa, and then we swap round. Then we do all the, the sprints outside and burpees. Uh, he, he just bonkers. Two days before I won my world title, he made me do sprints and burpees back and forth rugby field. If you watch the fight, I'm struggling to actually get in the ring. My feet, my legs are so stiff from the burpees. I could, I could hardly get in the ring. But he was just bongos but it worked give me an idea of what a conversation um between yourself and uh and enzo kazagi would have been um the day before uh, the the, uh, the uk was about to announce the heat wave that we've had for the last two days so imagine you've just uh, you've picked up the phone and gone enzo i think it's, it's going to be a bit warm next couple of days maybe we should just keep training what was the response of being oh i i i, I tell you some examples i remember i remember we played a, a charity football match in the summer, a local team, you know, good, you know, me, Kerry Oak, Nathan Cleverley, Joe, Gavin, uh, just a good match. But I only had metal studs. So I played on a hard ground, metal studs. Uh, after about 60 minutes, I started, you know, waving the hands. Oh, suddenly he pulled me off. He said, I said, I could feel the blisters on my feet really badly. He said, ah, fucking get on with it. So he got on with it. Get the change room after the fight, took my shocks off, got changed. And on my both both my feet, I was able to peel off a full a full foot of skin. Ooh. That's how bad that's how bad it was, right? And I actually phoned him in the night. I can't come to the gym tomorrow. I said I can't walk. He said, You better be at that fucking gym. <laughs> so I tur- I turned up. I turned up, I had bandages on my round my ankle around my feet. Hoping I'd uh, ease the pain. I thought I'd be able to a quiet one. He just popped me through the mill. I was in agony. No, no excuses whatsoever with him. Nothing at all. You know, if I said I had a bad angle, he'd tell me to run it off. He, he was one of them. Now, for, for I, I was lucky enough to uh, to see um, the old gym. Uh, but for those who who've never seen it before, and it may be under the illusion that uh, every gym is like Floyd Mayweather's in Las Vegas, describe the old gym that used to train with you, Joe, um, and Enzo. It was basic. That's all you all you say. Basic. Uh, water was cold. Uh, we had a few bags. We had a ring. We had a field outside. We had steps outside the gym. We had everything you need. And you know, I was, I was, a, I was a believer in as well. You want to learn to fight. You train to fight. None of us, none of us, sports science, lifting weights and stuff like that. You actually train to fight. You sort of, you know, when you look back thirty years, forty years, Leonard Hagra, Duran, and Hearns, all they done was run and box. And that's that's all we did. That's 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 all we did. I remember I remember going to Vegas once, and it was an article in one of the men's magazines, and they done a a, a day training with Joe Calzaghi. And the guy turned around, he said, "Oh fucking hell, does Joe do all this?" I said, "He doesn't do none of it." I said, "All he does is run and spar, run and pad, run and box." I don't think I've ever seen him do ten press ups, <laughs> but the man could fight. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I do remember um, hearing um, from Joe Calzaghe himself about uh, the, 
the soft side of his dad when he said, I'm, my hand's in a bad way, I don't think I can take the Lacey fight. And he basically sort of said, yeah, that's that's not going to happen. You're going to fight. And, you know, it, let's just say I'm giving a very mild version here. And his dad basically read the right act. And then, oh, yeah, he, we, he got in there. We went through it loads of times, me and him sparring. You know, if he, he did, couldn't do something his dad wanted to do, they then two start fucking screaming at each other. Ends up that, call yourself a champ, fucking champ. <laughs> and I, you know, we'd about to, we'd about to spar. You see Joe's head's not in it. And I'm like, ah. Oh. And they called each other everything. But as soon as they left the gym, back to normal. Love it. It was, Love it. It was a great, it was a great relationship they had. Very rare between father and son to have it that good, to be honest. Especially, you know. Yeah, it was, mate. It was, it was literally next day, new day. Uh, if Joe done something wrong, he'd have it again. But it was, <laughs> it was, but it was like a great relationship they had between each other. Brilliant. Now, you beat Dennis Hobson to become the WBO World Cruiserweight Champion in 2006. You then defend it. Mark Hobson. Uh, Mark Hobson, sorry. Mark Hobson, sorry. Yeah. And, uh, and then um, you, you defend it against Bobby Gunn. And then you were up against Wayne a Big Truck Braithwaite. It was a former WBC World Champion. Hard as hell, hard as they come. Talk to me about that fight. But to, to me, I actually won it the night they beat Dominguez. That's the way, that's the way I always put it because... Johnny Nelson won fight then. We knew he wasn't going to fight again. So I think I was number two. Dominguez was number one. So he was number one and number two. Um, and that is the hardest man I ever faced at Dominguez. Like punching a brick wall. But with Braithwaite, um, well, he, he was a killer. Uh, he was an absolute killer. He was a, that was supposed to be my toughest fight. And uh, I think I was the only time I've ever gone in the ring. I wouldn't say scared, but sort of nervous. You know, he hit, me, he hit me on the shoulder in the first round. Uh, about 30 seconds in, I remember thinking, fuck it, I don't want, I don't want him on the chin. Like, so I clicked on, I boxed smart, and probably not my best fight, but probably my best boxing performance. No, no, definitely, yeah. You want a very, very wide uh, point decision against someone everyone thought was going to uh, get you into a, a, a tear-up, and then it was going to be sort of bombs away from both of you. But, you know, it's a very clever fight from yourself. Um now, not a lot of people realise that, despite the fact that you campaigned most of your career at, at Cruiserweight, but um, you were pretty much walking around the Cruiser, if not actually below it most of the time, weren't you? A lot like that. I, uh, the night I boxed Braithwaite, so it's a 14 stone 4 limit, I think I weighed in a 13-10. Uh, and I, I, was, I was always like that. I always used to fight like that. I was, just, I was so physically strong, uh, and obviously I could punch very hard, and... You know, at the time when I didn't know much about diet and things like that, I I'd struggle to make light weight. I'd have to just starve myself. So it, it was always, you know, I did I did mind fighting crews. It was like, it was like a catch catch twenty two where obviously they hit harder and they bigger, but I was physically stronger. I was faster and I hit just as hard as any heavyweight. When I went down to light heavyweight, I was still strong. I still hit hard, not as hard as a cruiser, but I wasn't as fast. Uh, the, the, the speed equaled out. You, you dropped down to, uh, to to light heavy, and um, you win the uh, the Commonwealth light heavyweight strap. But it wasn't without controversy. You ended up by fighting Over McKenzie twice. Talk to me about that first fight. Uh man, I just had a bad year. I had a bad year. I lost my dad. Uh, problems with my son. I had that stupid drugs ban, which shouldn't have been a drugs ban. Uh, and and I just topped my year off. You know, I was like. I just, I just couldn't believe it, but yet I thought, you know, that's that's the way my life is. Uh, he caught me with a shot. I remember, I remember the first round come. I hit him with a body shot right at the end of the round. I remember, remember him taking a gasp of air, <sighs> and I remember saying to Gary, "I said he's done, he's finished." Uh, second round comes out. He caught caught me with a right hand. I went backwards, tucked my hands up. He started throwing about two or three punches. And literally, as he threw him, he went, <gasps> he sort of shot his load. I remember thinking, oh, this ain't going to take long now. Next thing, Ian John Lewis jumps in. Uh, I'm looking at Ian John Lewis, stupid. He's looking at me and he, he, he mouthed to me, sorry. He, he knew he made a mistake. Um, and it was just, it was just my year. It was just the way my year went. Like, and, you know, I said I wanted a, a rematch. Um, and then he probably would a warm up of Carl Wilde. I won, but I boxed terrible. I boxed absolutely terrible. And they phoned me up. They said, Oh, you should leave the McKenzie rematch. I said, Look, give me something to motivate me. 
I like Mackenzie. I said, I'll knock him out. I said, I'm going to knock him out the first time. I said, but I'll knock him out the second time. And they go, oh, yeah. it's up to you, Wendy. I said, yeah, give me him. I said, I'll knock him out. That's exactly what I did. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, and you did. Now, um, you, you, you've had the most incredible journey. We're going to talk about uh, uh, your fight when you're in with pound for pound uh, legend Roy Jones Jr. is second. However, what I'd like you to, uh, to answer for everyone who, again, maybe not knows this, but you had an MMA fight like the night before a fight or the night after? Talk to no, us. No, no, no. I won an MMA fight. When I boxed, when I was doing a lot of jujitsu. I loved jujitsu. Um, and I boxed Brain, 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 Wayne Brayfield on a Saturday night. On a Sunday, I went to sport the local boys uh, in the Bristol Open. Uh, and while I was there, the boys said, Oh, do you fancy a crack? I said, Yeah, go on. They're messing about. I thought they were joking. And they went and got me a gi. So I was, uh, I was only 88 kilos. I was, I was in the freaking 100 kilo class and stuff like that. And I done I don't like I lost in the final. I lost by a point. And I'd only been I'd only been um playing Jiu Jitsu for a couple of months and uh I got to the final. I had slam of the day as well, so I was happy with that. Just uh just I just always like competing against, competing against myself and competing against anyone. I love a challenge. There we go. Mad weekends with uh, with Enzo Macronelli. Now moving on to Russia here. Um you go out there and uh, you fight against Roy Jones, you I mean, the, the fight, I just remember the punch and he was out for like a couple of minutes. So what were your memories of it? Uh, I, I just remember, I remember telling him at the way and I said, you've made a massive mistake for you. And he went, no, I said, look, it's an honour to fight you. Um, but I said, I will knock you out. Uh, they, they all laughed. And they thought I was there to lay down for some reason. But when we went to the public workout, when I started hitting the pads, they all they all sort of, the face had changed. Because when I hit a pad, I just sound different to everyone else. And it was like, they, they realised they were in it. And at the, at the way, and like I said, I told him I was knocking him out. And he tried to pull me towards him. I pulled him towards me. It was no way. Uh, we guessed in the arena. It was it was mad. They, co- they called me. They said, look, McCann time to go. Uh, they made me wait in the fire for like half hour. You know, in the freezing cold ice rink. Didn't bother me in a slight dash. Started punching walls, uh, getting myself up my the way I do. Uh, Guess in the ring, I just beat him up, and I, I said I, I said I would. He made a massive mistake, and you know when, when I caught him, uh, he went down. I sort of just went in the corner, took the knee, uh, made a sign of the cross. You know I don't I don't want to hurt anyone. I've always been like that from a, a young young age. I remember not my first kid out of twelve. I, I done I done exactly the same thing. So it was just, it, it, it was frightening for a minute because I really thought I'd hurt him. But um, he was all right. Oh, that's good. That's good. And uh, what happened in the changing room when you got back? Oh, uh, man, it's just, it's just a long story. But it's like, to cut the long story short, uh, the, the, the Spiker gang, the Night Wolves, um, they were told basically that it was going to be an easy fight for Roy. Uh, they told them this, told them that it was going to be easy. So I, I can gather they, they put a bit of money on it, and uh, obviously they lost. So they dragged me up the corridor. Um, me, Francis Warren, and lucky enough, it all, it all got sorted. But it was it was frightening times. I thought they were going to feed me <laughs> the pigs. Again, it's, it's like a short story of books. It weekends with Enzo Macaronelli. You know, you're always guaranteed some action. It. Last couple of questions. Um, we got Isaac Chamberlain against uh, Chris William Smith coming up soon. Uh, who wins it and how? To be honest, mate, I don't know. I, 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 I'll give you a decision closer to the time, so I'm not going to sit in the fence. But at this moment in time, I'd have to go for uh, the boy who's been more active, who's had the harder fights, uh, and that's Chris William Smith. You know, I thought I thought McCarthy last time would have learned learned more from the first fight than. Won the rematch when Bill and Smith impressed me. But I've also been impressed by Chamberlain over the years. I think he's a lot better. People remember him for that stink fest with Macaulay. I think he's a lot better than that. It's just the, the styles didn't gel. You know, he's starting to throw good body punches. And, and I'm pretty torn. I, I think it's a really, really good fight. No, it is. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's, it's a great matchup. It's great that these domestic cruiserweight matchups are coming at the moment. And uh, if William Smith uh, does win this, or Isaac Chamberlain does win this, it propels him into sort of mandatory position for one of the titles at least. And then, um, yeah, then it hopefully, you know, we're looking at maybe uh, 
grouping together, you know, the best the best we've got there, Riyak Poor and um and then obviously Lawrence Akoli and uh, you know the, the new lad that's just won the um uh, the, from from Australia just beat uh, Morris Breeders. So oh, uh, yeah, oh, that's it, Opta, yeah. So right, very final question then to Mark If uh, if you could spar three rounds with any past boxing legend, who would it be? Harleyfield. Loved loved Harleyfield. I absolutely loved him. He, he learned so much from him. Tyson, it would have been a war while it lasted. And it wouldn't have ended well for me. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, uh, just, uh, as far as goes, Harleyfield, I absolutely loved the man. Beautiful, beautiful. Enzo, thank you so much for coming on Slothbox and uh, look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks again, mate. Welcome. Cheers, man. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.